Hey everyone, today we're going to be dismantling the motor on this Mercedes SLR 50 go-kart. When I bought the go-kart, the gentleman mentioned that the motor seemed to not turn anymore. So I knew it was seized. When I brought it home, I put some transmission fluid in it and it started turning freely. So after trying to start it a few times, I realized there was more than just a few small issues with it. With being the first time I've worked on a rotary motor or even a go-kart motor, I decided to take everything apart slowly and observe every piece that I was taking off in detail so when it goes back together, everything goes together with ease. I'm currently unbolting the carburetor. When you're taking off a carburetor, it's best to keep them level so the float inside doesn't have to be readjusted when you fire the engine back up. Currently I'm just taking off the screws that hold the clips for all the wires. The piece that you see in my right hand is actually the starter for the motor. Once I get the carburetor, starter, and engine guard out of the way, I can remove the motor and start dismantling. Now that I have the carburetor and engine shroud out of the way, I'm able to take off the coolant lines. What I noticed in these coolant lines is that it's green antifreeze. Typically when you're racing a car or any sort of motored vehicle on a track, you have to use water so that if you have a problem, it doesn't make the track slippery with actual antifreeze if you were to have a spillage on the track. But with this one in particular, I noticed it does have green antifreeze in it. That was a little bit suspicious to me. Using a mechanical puller, I'm able to take this miniature flywheel off. The flywheel is where the starter is able to grab onto and turn the motor for ignition. When you take that flywheel off, there's a little keyway underneath. With anything, when you're taking it apart, make sure you keep the pieces with whatever piece it's on. So that flywheel will go into a plastic bag with the keyway in it. These bolts are coming out with ease with just a simple Allen key, which tells me that the torque spec on these bolts cannot be very high. With doing a little bit of research on rotary motors, I know that this is a side plate that uses the side seals on the rotor to make compression. The triangle looking piece that fits around the shaft, that's what's called the rotor. And the shiny pieces that are also shaped in a triangle that are on the outer edge, those are your rotor seals. Not to be confused with the ones that are on the tips of the triangle, those are your apex seals. Now inside this motor, you can't see it necessarily right now, but there's quite a bit of rust that I can see. This is definitely gonna be a problem. You can actually see the rust on the rotor here. If you're rebuilding a rotary motor, it's best to label where you've actually taken those seals off if you're trying to plan to reuse them. I found two spots on the chamber that were damaged. I found one on the inside and I found a damaged spot that they welded on the back side. This could have been from water damage being water in it left over the winter and it froze or perhaps the water pump wasn't running and it ended up exploding. This side piece with the dirt it looks like that's where the engine was seized. Here's the needle bearing. It has too much damage and will need to be replaced along with the eccentric shaft, as you can see right here. I have my work cut out for me, and I'll show you in the next video.